So you may be grilling burgers and having barbecue as part of your 4th of July activities, but beware, your pets can be at risk. There are a lot of cautionary tales pet owners need to look out for. And thankfully, to give us some advice, great advice, might I add, we have Dr. Janice Price from the Windmill Admiral Hospital to tell us all about it. Dr. Price, welcome back. Well, thank you. <laughs> Glad to be here. Anytime. How are you doing today? We're doing great. Staying okay. busy. Staying busy, and of course, this time of the year, from what you told me earlier, and I, I find it very alarming as well, because it is for humans, it's also one of the deadliest times for pets this year. This is a really tough time of year for pets, and it's a very busy time of year for veterinarians treating problems that we could have prevented. Yeah. And so let's, let's start off first thing, uh, food. Yes. <laughs> Oh, the, the yummy barbecue that we eat at <laughs> July 4th. It's I love brisket. your note. It's Outdoor barbecue is people food, not pet food. That's right. And, I mean, brisket, baby back ribs, regular ribs. The stuff that okay, we love. It has a lot of fat on it, which, of course, goes to our waistline, but causes pancreatitis in pets. Mm -hmm. And also, the baby back ribs and the long ribs are excellent uh, means of causing obstructions in your dog's digestive tract. A lot of dogs... We'll go ahead and swallow them rather than just gnaw on them. And then a day or two later, that's when us veterinarians have to do a surgery to retrieve the bone that's now stuck in their small intestine. So besides the spices and the fat from, from these food that we eat, it's also the bones and even right. other... Yeah, it, it's a foreign object. Uh, it doesn't belong in a dog's digestive tract. And it is a life-threatening emergency that has to be dealt with. And an emergency abdominal procedure is not a cheap veterinary pr procedure to have to do. So it'd be wonderful if we could prevent these problems. <laughs> keep the of, bones away from the dogs. A lot of things could be prevented, yes. I'm sure. Okay, let's talk about since 4th of July, fireworks is also on a lot of people's minds. Oh, fireworks. There <laughs> are, well, think of all the dogs that are afraid of thunder yeah. and all the dogs that are afraid of gunshots. Well, they're also afraid of fireworks. True. And so why would you take your dog to a fireworks display? Mm -hmm. That is probably not a well thought out decision. Most dogs are not going to be comfortable that close to fireworks. If yeah. it's really loud for our ears, only imagine how loud it is for theirs. So their ears are more sensitive. Oh, they're very, very sensitive. They can hear a lot of things we can't hear. So the best solution is to, if your pet normally stays in a crate, go ahead and put him in his crate before you leave the house. Play some good country music, <laughs> try to drown out any extraneous uh, firework sounds and leave him where he's safe, where he won't get into the bad things food-wise and where he won't be terrified by the fireworks. And really for us, I know you pointed this out before, that fireworks to us, we, we are in awe of it, but dogs, right. they won't yeah, get Dogs that. have no aesthetic appreciation of, of the gorgeous starburst firework. All they know is that there was an explosion that hurt their ears. And if they panic, they're going to try to get away. And if they're in a, in a total panic, they may bite and scratch it's in an awesome. effort to get away. And now you've got people getting hurt because the pet is in a terrified panic. <laughs> this is like, preventable. Sounds Leave like a them terrible at home. movie. Yeah. But now, really, also another point they mentioned is, you know, to prevent all of this, keep them indoors. Right. Keep them area. inside. July 4th is the number one day of the year for pets to escape their homes because they're in a panic because of the fireworks. Yeah. And then July 5th is the number one day of the year for the shelters to be absolutely jam-packed with animals who've now been picked up. Now, those are the animals that make it to the shelter alive. There's also the pets who escape from the home, escape from the yard because of a panic from fireworks, and they end up getting hit by a car and killed on the road. So there, there's a lot of tragedy potentially here that we can prevent by thinking it through ahead of time. Now, I'm sure you've already answered this question, but we did have a viewer uh, question. Someone saying, I want to know if it's safe to take my dog with us to the fireworks show. Is it safe for, her, for him to be alone and scared? Okay. Real I quick. do not take your dog to a fireworks display. That's okay. for people. Now, you don't have to leave him alone at home scared. You can play music, put him in his crate. If you need to sedate him a little bit, you can use our friend Benadryl in the 25 milligram pink caplet, okay. and the dose is one pink caplet per 25 pounds of body weight. That's Give it. it about an hour before you leave the house, and most dogs get sleepy from antihistamines just like we do. Just like that. Yes. Benadryl is a friend, too. All right. Yes, and will cause no harm. Thank you so much, Dr. <laughs> it's my Price. Pleasure. To get your pet great care as well, she has so much information. You can visit Windmill Animal Hospital. They're off Windmill Circle. The number to set up an appointment, which you should do because she's always busy. They're even open on Saturdays. <laughs> Just call the number on your screen. Also, search them on Facebook.